British Columbia now, and the resignations keep on coming for Christy Clark and the B.C. Liberal Party. Three more members of Premier Christy, Christy Clark's Liberal government are expected to announce their intentions to leave politics. There's word Education Minister George Abbott, Children and Family Development Minister Mary McNeil, and Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier John Les will announce today that they will not seek re-election come May. Now this happens less than 24 hours after former Finance Minister Kevin Falcon stepped down from Cabinet and said he won't be running in the spring either, citing that old chestnut family reasons. To talk more about what's happening in BC politics right now, I'm joined by Michael Gagan. He's a media relations consultant with BCLobbyist.com and he watches BC politics very closely. All right, Michael, what does all this, I don't want to say desertion, signify, but <laughs> what do these resignations or possible resignations mean? Well, it first of all means that the confidence level is not high at all uh, amongst the government in terms of winning the next election. Um, if you don't, if you're, if you think that you may be defeated personally, or uh, if you get back in, you're just going to spend at least four years uh, languishing on the opposition benches after you've spent years in cabinet and, you know, at the levers of power. I mean, that's not a fun thing to work to work a lot of energy up around to sacrifice time uh, away from friends and friends and family. So um, I think most people in that situation, uh, they, if they've got an MLA pension or what have you, they're like, yeah, we're, I'm done. Uh, and uh, and of course they'll use the old line of you know time for new blood and time for renewal as as they head out the door. Sure. Now, how is the premier reacting? How can she put a, a spin on this as a positive? Well, I mean, I think the premier's uh, you know she's done the classic thing of of trying to trying to make the best of a bad situation. I mean, she's losing some heavy heavy hitters like Kevin Falcon, um, and obviously. Uh, she's doing her best to hold the rest of them together by saying, oh yeah, now I'm going to promote from within the back benches. Um, and, uh, and of course the real uh, challenge for her will also be how do you attract uh, star candidates to what is now perceived as a sinking ship. Yeah, well how do you do that? Well, first of all, um, there has to be some kind of momentum, some kind of turnaround. Um, I don't, I obviously in terms of luring people away from uh, successful careers in the private sector or what have you, virtually impossible under these circumstances. I mean, it's difficult at the best of times because, I mean, politics is a blood sport. Um, but uh, certainly when there is little prospect, uh, one thing the, um, the NDP government did years ago is they appointed someone straight into cabinet who, who wasn't even elected as an MLA. That was one way of getting a star candidate uh, to come in. Uh, but other than rare exceptions like that, um, it's very difficult to attract uh, high caliber talent when, when you don't face the prospect of re-election. Sure. Michael, we've got less than a minute left. I want to ask you, Kevin Falcon was the runner-up to Christy Clark when it came to the leadership. Would the party look any different today had he won that leadership? Or, or would they still be in trouble and at risk of being decimated in the next election? Well, you know, there's an old saying in politics that, you know, there's people who get into politics because they want to do something, and there's people in, in po get into politics because they want to be someone. And Kevin Falcon definitely came across as a politician who wanted to be there to do something. Uh, and the criticism that's been leveled at Christy Clark is it's more about she wanted to be someone. Um, so I think it would have been a government that uh, would have been far less photo op, far more uh, substantive, far more, you know, govern, uh, just focused on governance, um, much the same way it was under Campbell. But, the, but uh, that doesn't mean they would have been any more successful in terms of re-election because whoever has succeeded Gordon Campbell was inheriting the HST fiasco, was inheriting a lot of bad blood uh, between the, uh, the former premier and the electorate. So it would have been a very difficult challenge regardless of who had won. Michael Gagan talking BC politics with us today. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.